Welcome to the Simply Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Calandra. I made my first real estate investment when I was 23 years old. Uh, I bought a condo and it was a two bedroom condo. I was single, recently graduating from college, and I rented out the second bedroom to uh, a friend of mine. And then he left, and then it was another friend. Uh, so that was my first foray into real estate investing. And over that time, I'm 50 years old now, I've invested in real estate in one form or another all along the way. Sometimes more active, sometimes uh, doing less deals. Right now, I have a, a small portfolio of commercial and residential real estate. And so what I wanted to talk about today is four things that you want to consider before buying an investment property. So the first thing is to know your numbers. Surprise, I'm a certified financial planner, a financial geek, and I'm going to suggest that you want to know your numbers before you buy an investment property. Uh, there are lots of numbers to know. Uh, there's the upfront purchasing cost, the cost of insurance, you have property taxes, there's utilities, maintenance, there's the cost when you need to search for a tenant, you might pay a real estate agent, or you might have to place an ad, what have you. But uh, there are a lot of numbers to know. I'm also a fan before you buy an investment property to create what's called a pro former profit and loss statement or PL. And basically you would map out if you own the property, um, how you think it would look, that's the pro forma part, prospectively how the property might behave numbers wise, how much income you would have, how much expenses you would have, how much would be left over. And the pro forma is something very good to create at the beginning and then in a monitor to see if your forecast was correct. Did you collect more income or less? or expenses higher or lower? If they were higher, was it a one-off or is it something that would be recurring? But you want to know your numbers. Uh, it can be exciting to buy an investment property and sometimes people can get caught in the emotion and perhaps get caught up in what sometimes could be a little get-rich-quick kind of mentality and they don't know their numbers. I would submit to you, if you get into investment real estate and you don't know your numbers you're liable to get beaten up financially it's a competitive marketplace and knowing your numbers is very important so that's the first of the four things to consider when buying an investment property number two is to know what it means to be a landlord uh, so I've been a landlord for a long time it's not easy work you have to be prepared that you're going to get calls. And usually when you get calls, it's not good news. There's going to be problems, upsets, obstacles. Uh, they're all manageable. They're all doable. But you need to be prepared for that. The adage that you'll also see if you read anything about real estate is, you know, are you ready to get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning that the toilet's not working? And I think that's an apt thing to think about so that you know what it means to be a landlord and you know what you're signing up for. You have to recognize that if you're investing in investment real estate, there will be times when your real estate is empty and not collecting income. But the expenses don't go away. You need, that know, you need to know that going in. Sometimes you'll have to chase tenants for money. They may not pay on time. They'll be late. They'll make excuses. Some legitimate, some otherwise. But some tenants are not going to pay on time and you may have to chase your money. Some tenants are not going to pay at all. You'll have to deal with evictions. You'll have to deal with people that make promises, that sign contracts, and don't fulfill their end of the bargain. You need to know what it means to be a landlord. Personally, I think it can be managed. I have done some good things over the years. I've also done some things that didn't work out where I wasn't a good landlord or some of my practices as a landlord led to me making less money and in some instances losing money. Uh, as a landlord, it could be a do-it-yourself thing where you do everything. If something's broke, you fix it. Uh, you could collect the rent, you could run the books, you could do everything soup to nuts, do it yourself. The attractiveness of that is that you get to keep all of the leftover revenue 
all the income that's left when expenses are paid, but it does mean you do it yourself. Uh, it could be a combination where you do some things, but maybe you're not a good electrician, so you have to find a good electrician that can help you when you need assistance with electrical issues. You could hire a property manager, and that sounds great, right? You could buy the investment property, hire somebody that will deal with all the stuff. Well, I use a property manager, and it is great, but it's not a silver bullet, I can assure you. First off, you have to pay them, and they're not cheap, uh, and that eats into your bottom line because you have to pay them from the revenue. And even though you may not deal with the tenants, that might insulate you from the two o'clock in the morning, the toilet is broken call, you still have to manage the manager. Nobody's gonna care more about the project, the property, the income and the expenses than you do. It's your responsibility. So you do have to manage the property manager. And so the work might be different, but it's not like you can't, it's not like you could just never look at it or not pay attention. That is an example of buyer beware. If you hire a property manager, and you don't manage the manager, you're likely not to have good results and you're likely to lose money. That's my opinion as well as my experience. Uh, number three of the four things to consider is have tax awareness. I strongly recommend if you're considering buying an investment property or if you have one, uh, you should definitely consult a tax professional, probably a CPA. Uh, there's a lot that goes into owning investment real estate on the tax side. For example, your rental income is taxable income. So you have to declare that in addition to whatever other income you get from bank interest, your W-2 job, you may own a business, what have you. Uh, but also owning investment property creates an opportunity to have lots of deductions. Mortgage interest you could deduct, property taxes you could deduct, operating costs you could deduct. I pay a property manager, I could deduct that. Repairs can be deducted. There's also something else called depreciation, which is another form of uh, a deduction. Uh, there are great tax advantages when owning investment real estate. But, and this is an important but, you need to do homework. You need to get educated and you probably in most instances need to get the help of a great tax pro to walk you through these things to make sure that you do everything properly, that you take advantage of all of the opportunities you have to mitigate taxes when owning real estate. And the fourth and final thing is to know your why. Owning real estate is, I think, a good thing. It's not for everybody. I think it's a good thing. On your way to build wealth, I think it's a, a nice tool. It's one that I've used, as I've said already a few times today. Uh, and if you have wealth, it's a good way to deploy some of that wealth. But again, it's not for everybody. So you want to know your why because it's not easy. You want to know what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to create income? Are you trying to reduce taxes? Do you want to create a new job for yourself, either full-time, some people aspire to be their own property manager and have a portfolio of investment properties that they work on and manage and generate enough income so that they may be better off than what they're doing now, maybe at a W-2 kind of job. Or maybe you want to create a little side hustle where you make some extra money and do some extra work and that's better than getting a part-time gig someplace else. Your why could be that you want to diversify. Many people have money invested in stocks and bonds and bank accounts and you may want to incorporate real estate to get some diversification. There's a lot of merit to that argument. Uh, but again, it's not easy to invest in real estate. If it was easy, everybody would do it and everybody would make money. It's not get rich quick. It's not what you see when you watch the infomercials when you can't sleep at two o'clock in the morning. Yes, the same two o'clock in the morning when they call to say the toilet is not working. So you wanna know your why. What are you trying to accomplish? What's important? What do you wanna have get out of it? And it could be a combination of some of these things, but you really wanna think through what your why is. Why are you gonna pursue buying one or more investment properties. So just to review, we talked about the four things to consider when buying an investment property. Uh, number one was know your numbers. Number two, know what it means to be a landlord. Number three, be tax aware. And number four, know your why. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you haven't visited the website, 
www.elliotwealth. That is my financial planning and investment advisory firm. Please do so. There's great information there about how we work with clients, how we help them achieve their goals, how we help them win with money. So please check it out if you haven't done so already. Also, I always ask, please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. That would be great. I appreciate you listening today. I hope you got something out of it. And I will be back with you on the next episode of the Simply Financial Podcast very soon. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of Sage Point Financial Incorporated and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Please note the information being provided is strictly as a courtesy. When you link to any of the websites provided here, you are leaving this website. We make no representation as to the completeness or accuracy of the information provided at these websites, nor is the company liable for any direct or indirect technical or system issues or any consequences arising out of your access to your use of third-party technologies websites, information, and programs made available through this website. When you access one of these websites, you are leaving our website and assume total responsibility and risk for your use of the websites you are linking to. Securities and advisory services are offered through Sage Point Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, insurance services offered through Elliott Wealth Management, LLC, not affiliated with Sage Point Financial.